Aloha, Foundation staff, new and old alike. To anyone in the anomalous community who's reading a bootleg copy of this, fuck you. And also, fuck whoever's responsible for the leak in the first place. Unless it's me. No, no especially if it's me. Whatever. So the OFIs have been on my case for a while now about writing my own field manual in order to pass on my expertise to the younger generation. Increasingly so, since I find myself less and less of the younger generation as time goes on. Since there's a recent uptick in staff stories about me, I decided now is as good a time as ever to release my field manual. How to Survive When Reality Doesn't by Alto Clef. And within these pages, you'll learn how to deal with reality benders and what to do if the laws of physics go sideways without warning. I don't like to go on tangents though, so you might have to sift through some bullshit to get the good stuff. Hm. I just wanted to give him mushrooms and see if he affects them the same way he does plants, and they looked at me like I was an idiot. Uh, mushrooms aren't plants, Alto. They're fungi. I mean, I know that. But he's a biblical SCP and back in ye old Bible times, when using the modern system of taxonomical nomenclature, they didn't have a system. All names were colloquial, which is why when the Bible calls Jonah's whale a great fish, it isn't wrong. A fish was anything that lived in the water. The Catholic Church even officially declared that beavers were fish in the 17th century so you could eat them during Lent. So if by biblical logic a beaver is a fish, then, I mean, surely mushrooms are plants. At the time Cain was cursed, no one knew what fungi were. Even Aristotle divided the living world into just plants and animals, so it makes sense that Cain's curse would extend to fungi, which, you know, ancient people would not have distinguished from plants. Of course, due to the Foundation's damn bureaucracy, I still don't know. I mean, it would be so simple, just pick up some mushrooms from the nearest supermarket and give them to Cain, see what happens. Denied by the Ethics Committee for reckless endangerment of mushrooms or some bullshit like that. I don't actually know why it was denied, probably just out of spite. I got close to Kane once with a can of Campbell's mushroom soup, but security tackled me before I could open the can. Actually, no, it was Heinz soup. The fuck was I doing with Heinz soup? Yes, he really rode 6A2. Yes, he really got a water bottle stuck on his dick. I mean, the question remains, can he ride 6A2 with a water bottle on his dick? The most frequent response to my requests is, there's not enough in the budget for that, to which I most frequently respond, well, what the heck is the budget? I mean, how do we acquire resources, and how do we allocate said resources? I mean, that's not an unreasonable question. Is a little transparency too much to ask for a covert international organization? Like, like I'm pretty sure we built a fake moon once, but Lombardi couldn't get coffee and donuts for his orientation? I mean, how does that make any sense at all? One of the most common questions I'm asked by lower-ranking personnel is how many SCPs are actually in containment. And I tell them, that's above your pay grade. But what I don't tell them is that it's above my pay grade too. What I do know is that you can't go by the database. Entries appear and disappear from that thing multiple times a day. And some of those files are definitely deliberate disinformation, and not just the old one entries either. I mean, SCP entries get reassigned... There are outdated files still floating around for some reason, plus, due to the CK reality shift, some of those files are from alternate realities that don't even exist for us anymore. It's very confusing. I swear, I've been to facilities with multiple empty cells that allegedly held SCP objects. I mean, maybe they were out for testing or something, but you know, who knows? Now, sometimes I fear that we've become so entangled in our lies that none of us knows the truth anymore. Sorry, I got a little spacey right there. Yeah. I think I might be too stoned. Oh, uh, if you want an estimate on the SCP count, I'd say at least a few hundred based on my own personal experiences in the Foundation, and at most, like, tens of thousands based on the maximum capacity of all Foundation sites and the areas that are supposed to exist. Or maybe the anomalies are normal and everything we think of as normal are the anomalies. Yeah, let's go with that. Look, Apollyon was supposed to exclusively be for SCP-2317. It was this, uh, oh, and stop reading if you don't have high enough clearance, but, uh, it was this colossal eldritch demon bent on destroying the world that was only kept in check by some ancient forgotten magic that was slowly failing. Its escape and the subsequent extinction of the human race was inevitable and there was nothing we could do. I mean, that's what Apollyon means, but then Talaran was like, Oh, this reality bender that's torturing me in a living hell for all eternity and will do the same to everyone else if it gets free is pretty extra, so I'll classify it as Apollyon too, and now literally the entire database is classified as Apollyon. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it still sucks. I mean, granted, 
2317 turned out to be not quite as invincible as we first feared. <laughs> the O5s ended up taking it out with like a couple of howitzer rounds to the cranium, and I mean, even if that hadn't worked, how would it have even fit through the door? I mean, I'm not saying that makes it okay to just use a polyon for anything. I, you know what? I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Mimetic kill agents are nothing but a scare tactic. Nothing happens. I mean, go on, look at one, I dare you. In fact, a double dog day, and you cannot say no to a double dog dare. I mean, let's see, which 001 proposals are true? I mean, we know mine's not, because I'm a liar. Everything I say is a lie, including this. I mean, locks definitely can't be real, because that obviously didn't happen. Unless it's one of those CK reality shifts again. And the factory is real, so maybe Bright's proposal is at least sort of true. I mean, Gear's prototype I've actually seen, so that one's definitely true. It also explains why Keto is pronounced that way. It actually has nothing to do with the Cabal, it was just some doctor's name. Also, if the Broken God one's true, that means the Gulf of California didn't exist before 1942, but if that's true, then California never would have been mistaken for an island. Unless, I mean, unless we made that up too. I mean, see what I mean about getting lost in our own web of lies? You know, back when the O5 started cracking down on gratuitous cross-testing and general shenanigans, they were even going to forbid staff from using the pizza box, but then pretty much all of Site-19 threatened to go on strike. Do you know how weird it is for a clandestine organization to have to deal with a strike? As far as I know, uh, that pizza box is literally the only reason half of those people are still with the Foundation. Which makes sense, considering. I mean, as you might imagine, I've butted heads with the ethics committee a few times over my practice of, you know, secretly drugging trainees with designer hallucinogens to simulate a reality bender attack. The memetics and info hazard guys do something similar, but apparently that's okay because they tell people beforehand and they get consent or some hippie bullshit. My training program only works because people think it's real. That's the whole point. Have some people harmed or killed themselves or even others during my training sessions? Sure. Have people committed suicide or otherwise suffered long-term psychological damage due to the guilt of the psychological trauma inflicted during their bad trip? I mean, yeah. I mean, would it make more sense to gradually acclimate trainees to the stresses of reality-bending attacks instead of subjecting them to a full-blown simulated attack all at once and losing valuable personnel to... Oh, fuck. I hate the metric system. I read everything in Imperial and just let the containment specialists convert it. I mean, it costs the Foundation time, money, and maybe even lives, but I don't care. Fuck it. I hate the metric system. I know no one wants to talk about June, but I still cannot believe how many staff and SCPs were lost over a friggin' rainbow logo. I thought Gears was crazy when he was worried they might stoke division between staff of different ideological leanings, and the next thing I know, the solidarity is gone. I mean, it's just gone. And we need that thing for space threats, like, like that giant alien robot in Jupiter's red spot that's gunning for us. Trump's space force isn't going to be able to hold that thing off. That's all on us. You know, maybe that moon champion guy could help. Everyone likes to make fun of junior researchers for suggesting we use titanium, but I have a titanium ceramic frying pan and I love it. Sure, a lot of the time titanium would be overkill, but I mean, considering what we're trying to keep contained, I'd say overkill is the way to go. Now I got a question for you. Why wasn't I, the Foundation's go-to guy for dealing with reality benders not part of Project Orpheus? A Cronenberg-esque nightmare of mind rape and body horror to turn reality benders into plug-and-play eigenweapons. Because I'm not stupid. What happened to Dr. Costello and her team was inevitable. You can't control reality benders with reality anchors. Anchors are for emergency, short-term containment only. Because sooner or later, the bender either figures out how to bypass them, or they just plain break down because they're shit. We don't contain benders. We terminate them when they're vulnerable. An anchor might give you a window of vulnerability, but you're a fool if you think it's going to keep you safe forever. Just shoot the bastard. I mean, God knows. The Foundation probably regrets not taking their shot at me. It was the best of times, and it was the worst of times. Actually, if I'm quoting classic literature, I think I might be running out of steam. I guess I'm done. Well, congratulations, you're now certified for low human counters and type green combat scenarios. Well done, Agent. I'm not sure how long I was talking for and my attention wandered a bit at times, but I'm sure I said something useful in there. Just use your newfound abilities responsibly. You know, like me. <laughs> Aloha.